Part of our Creed Day celebration will include a special blessing of Bibles and catechisms for our new confirmation students. In addition, all Sunday school teachers, King's Kids leaders, confirmation guides, choir leaders, nursery attendants, and Connect Group leaders will be asked to come forward for a special blessing during today's worship service. Connect Group leaders will meet this evening at 6 p.m. in room 111. Please make sure and have someone from your Connect Group there to represent you. Talk to Pastor Tom if you're unable to attend. Church Council will meet after that at 7.15. Council members, please see President Rich View if you're unable to make it. Wednesday evening activities begin this Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. There's something for all ages, so check out the gray pages for all the details. Be sure and stick around after Wednesday evening activities from 7.45 to 8.30 for our adult bell choir. The Sojourners and Stitches Connect Group meets this Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. No experience or sewing machine required. See page 2 of the gray pages for more details. The second Saturday's Connect Group meets this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at Shindig's Bar and Grill in Winfield. Please sign up at the sign-up sheet table or let Bruce or Kathy Trapp know if you plan on attending so they can reserve a large enough table. Announcements and calendar information are due to the office. Please get your Connect Group dates and schedule to the church office by next Sunday. Our fall activities are off to an awesome start. So for the latest information, be sure and visit risensavior.net and click News and Events. And you guessed it, read those great pages for all the ways that you can get involved and help share the love of Christ.
Good morning. Is there any truth to that video? Wow. When we think about all that our Lord has done for us, when we think of all that He has given to us and the freedom that we have through Him, and then the opportunity to be a part of His master plan, wow. Let's rise as we get excited about what it means to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Everyone, God, world without end. This is from His Word. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Teach me knowledge, good judgment, for I believe in your word. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Let's do just that.
be with you. Let's pray. Lord God, you do truly love us. The price was high, but you loved us enough to be our Savior and forgive us. Teach us and give us strength to be your disciples and to live the lives you have called us to live. Move us through your Holy Spirit to relinquish our need to save ourselves that we might live as your people, full of joy and power. Receive our praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. In our first reading for today, our Lord's going to show us how easy it should be to make the right choices in life. Again, I'm going to emphasize that, how easy it should be. Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live, that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The choices that are before us, all the things that God gives to us. So as we uh, let this simple truth be there, life or death? Hard choice? Well, maybe this is going to shed some light on how easy that really should be. Would you uh, listen to Philemon beginning at verse 1? Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the saints. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man and now a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful to both you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place and help me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you will do will be spontaneous and not forced. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done any wrong to you or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. So when we face choices in life, don't do what you have to do because you're compelled to do it or you're forced to do it. Do it out of love. When we start to do that, the love of Christ in service of others, there's a division that becomes really pretty broad. Our Lord's going to describe how broad that really is in our gospel for today. Would you rise? This is Luke 
14. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but it, if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You know, as I look around, I think everyone here has ears, right? So that's not the question. We have ears. It's time to really hear what he's saying to us. So as we uh, tune into him, let's remember who we are without him. Father of all mercies, I confess I have often made selfish choices based only on a desire to gratify myself. Lord, please forgive my sins of selfishness and apathy. I confess that the cost of discipleship seems to be too high, and I often refuse to carry my cross. For the times when my faith in you and my love for all the saints is not an encouragement to others. Forgive me, O Lord. Teach me and shape me through your mercy and grace to be your disciple, full of confidence of your love. Use me according to your will.
When we take the time to reflect and really realize who we are without Him, and then the summons that He has on our lives to, to come and follow Him, that clarity of truth takes us to a very simple truth. Through faith alone, all our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. lead me on and I'll follow you. It's, it's, it's this aspect of running after this, this obsession, this compulsion, this, this, this excitement that means I can't do anything else. And you know, as I look at God's coincidences in life, I, I recognize that we set today, or it was set that we would have a 
uh, tailgate party today, and we encourage people to wear their favorite team shirt, their favorite team whatever. And, and I, I look at that, and I recognize the fact that we're all rooting for the same team. Right? <laughs> and it's not just the Minnesota Vikings, right? They got the right colors, the purple, and yeah, never mind. The reality of life, of what it means in, in the things that we find ourselves in, that we, we have a passion, we have a compulsion. And when our team wins, we go, yay. Right? I mean, they kick the winning field goal, and, and all the best fans in the world go, whoopee. The three-pointer that wins the game and the basketball crowd goes, oh, well. The winning putt. Oh, man. Thanks be to God who has given us the win. Oh, well. Hear the excitement in the church? Hear the joy of what it means to know the victory that he has already given to us, to celebrate what it means to be his children, and we're on the winning team. That's what a disciple is. And a disciple does that not because of the stuff we see, but because of what we know. Well, here's a definition or an old definition of a disciple. Customarily, disciples left home and they moved in with their teacher. They provided their food and their lodging. Disciples became their servants and were under their authority. Sounds kind of like a slave, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what Paul talks about in his writings. He talks about him being a, well, it's translated a servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Greek word is doulos, same word as slave. It's not something to be entered into as though, oh, woe is me. But it's celebrated as the opportunity to grow and to, to learn yet even more and to be in the presence. Ah, oh, the presence. Well, let me put it this way. A disciple loves the word of God and is always hungry for more. Let me draw a simple comparison, okay? If you are excited and, and forced to like a certain football team, right? I'll just go there. You're forced to like that team, right? No, you've chosen. And now, through that excitement, when you get the new schedule for the new year, what's the first thing you put on your calendar? Do I really need to go there? So it turns basketball season, and, and the first things you place on your calendar are because it's important to you. Wow. What would happen if the people who want to be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ did the same with all of our schedules? That he always came Wow. But I think, as our opening video showed, we, we believe in what Jesus Christ has done. We understand what he's done for each and every one of us, and then we have the chance to respond. Uh, another word for disciple would be pupil. And in the opening video, we cut it short because it was about a four and a half minute video. And one of the statements that it makes in there is it talks about what it means to be a pupil of Jesus Christ. And it has a play on words. This is what it looks like. It says, don't be a pupil. And that's not a typo. That's supposed to be spelled that way. Do you know what a pupil looks like? And yes, I can see your faces, and yes, I know what you're going to be doing after a while. No, don't be a pupil. Be a pupil. Be a learner of our Lord Jesus Christ and get excited about what he wants to do and what he can do and, and, and just what the future looks like through him. Well, what would that look like? 
And you know, I, I'm excited about the reality of all that we have before us on this Creed Day and, and the new, new year with confirmation class. And, and I look at all the teachers that we have in the congregation, and, and I know all the kids in your classroom, just like in confirmation class, are going to be like this kid. Right? Right? Can you imagine if that were an honest picture of what it meant to be excited about learning and growing? And I hope you realize a lot more of this is caught than it is taught. Parents, being excited about what all is happening in our world today, not in a negative sense, but excited about it because God's given us a promise that He's going to work good for a few things, right? In fact, He says He's going to work good for, what is it? All things work together for good but it finishes something in there too. To those who love him and are called according to his purpose. You know, in our baptisms, God gave us a call. He said, come follow me. Beginning in our infancy. All through that journey called life as he, he summons us. And I wonder if we viewed it maybe more like this, if we would get more excited and said, yeah, I'm gonna get everything I can in my knowledge of him. That's where our word, his word, comes to our hearts today in a very strong, very strong way. He wants us to, to think about things. Remember as Tom read about that? If you're getting ready for a major project, the first thing you need to do is plan. You think about it. You think about the process. Well, our world lays out a lot of statements. Before you do something stupid, sit down and think through the consequences of your actions. In other words, look before you leap. Now, I did this in the first service, and I'm going to watch your faces and see how many of you understand what is up on the screen. Think about it. What's up there? For some of the congregation first service, and it's being duplicated, they're going, what is that? I don't think I know. Are you all seeing it now, right? Plain as day, simple. Some of you are still going, I don't know. Maybe if I look at it. Think about it. Because if we take the time to really think about what our Lord has done for us. When we take time to think about all the things he's promised, when we think about the reality that he's with us every step of our journey in life, it begins to change the way in which we do stuff. And it makes our choices in life a whole lot easier. Now, some of you I know are familiar with the Darwin Awards. Darwin Awards are the awards given each year to the, I'm going to put this in a nice way, people who don't think very clearly, don't think things through before they do them. One of the most recent awards I'm going to show you in just a moment, but before I do, I'm going to caution you, some of you aren't going to see anything wrong with this picture and what they're doing. Okay? Are you all set? Anybody see a problem with that? I love the capture. Sometimes you just see it coming, and you pray it doesn't. That's why our Lord wants us to see in our lives, as we begin to make choices, that so many of them that we think are, are hard to make, really aren't when we establish the priorities that he's called us to have. Remember those things called the 10 suggestions? They weren't suggestions, were they? Remember the what day? Did you realize it occurs the same time every week? Boy, that's going to catch some people off guard. Oh, today's Sunday. 
It's answered simply by what matters most to you. That's going to be first and foremost on your calendar. Right? Our Lord says, hmm, I'm going to make this choice real easy for you. Life and salvation, death and destruction. Hard choice? All in favor of death and destruction, yay! No. You're not going to choose that. And that's why he gives us this lesson today. Whoever doesn't hate his mother and father more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not hate is not worthy of me. Really? God's calling us to hate? Hope you see the difference now, right? Love, hate. The Greek word for hate is missio. It means hate, yeah. But literally what it means is also to love less. To have such a focus in your mind that when the choices come your way, it's not a choice anymore because it's that clear. I love this image because, yeah, the word up there is hate, but if you look closely, you're going to realize hate is not made up of hate. It's made up of love. Missio, that you have made such a miss between the two that instead of choosing to hate, you choose to love. You choose to allow the, the joy of your salvation to be instead of the difficulties of life. The psychologists have said there are 10,000 thoughts that pass through every human mind every day. Average. Some more, some less. 10,000. That's 70,000 every week, 3.65 million every year. Those are the choices that we have to make. Some people are going, well, I'm not sure I agree with that. Going back and forth. And, is the number important? Or the reality of how many choices we have to make important? That's why a loving God comes to our hearts today. And he says, choose this day and make the rest of your choices easy. The rest of your choices? Yeah. We got a lot of them to make, don't we? So as we go through that, the way that this really becomes simple, he who has ears, check it out. Do you have them? Let them hear. Understand what a relationship with God is really all about. It's not about being forced or required to do it, Philemon. It's about understanding what God has already done for you. That's, that's what I loved about that, that story in there. Paul is laying it out to him, and he says, uh, uh, Philemon, you know, this, this guy named Onesimus, um, he's your slave. Yeah, I could require him to go back, but I don't want to. In fact, I'd rather he did it out of love, in the same way that I'm asking you to respond, not because you have to, but out of love. And then he went ahead and reminded him, oh, by the way, recognize what you already owe me. Do you know what you owe, God? You know what he's done for you? Remember the opening video? Pupils? It's our turn to respond. This image is going to share with you what's going to happen in our closing song for today. Those chains, those things that hold us back, that bind us, that, that keep us from accomplishing all the things God would like us to do, that we would like to do, He sets us free. Freedom. We sang about it to start with. Now again, I'm going to ask, now that we all are rooting for the same team today, right? We're celebrating the freedom we have in this country. Let's celebrate the freedom that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, amen.
Please rise. Join together with me as we proclaim who our Lord truly is. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we respond to him. about you, but when I watch that video, I get tired. Do you realize all that is in one year? What happens when God's people get together to be about God's business? All that God does through it? Man. Well, as we join together today, it's Creed Day. Congregational Response to Excellence and Educational Development. It just rolls off the tongue. It means getting together with God, getting together with with what it means to be His people and celebrating every step of the way, but making sure that He's the one who gets all the glory. That's why we have a mission statement. It's on the screens. Would you join with me as we proclaim it? Our mission is to share the healing forgiveness of Jesus Christ, encourage a growing relationship with our Lord through small group ministry, and reflect God's love in everything we do. Everything we do. 
So I'm going to ask uh, the Faith Legacy people to please come forward at this time. Risen Savior is committed to gather, equip, send our members into the world. It includes our youngest members, their parents too. In order to better accomplish this, we're excited about Faith Legacy Ministry. This ministry is designed to help parents send their children out into the world. It's a ministry designed to follow children as they grow both in age and in faith. As one of our Faith Legacy steps, these parents came forward to talk about the importance of baptism for all people, including infants. They assembled Faith Legacy boxes, which they now continue to add to throughout their children's lives. In Scripture, God tells us to remember, and this is one way these families remember what God has done and continues to do. As we bless these legacy boxes, would you join with me, congregation? Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless these faith legacy boxes and the items that these families will include in them. May these be a reminder to them of your great love for them and for all of us. Help us all to remember that you are with us each step of the way of our lives here on earth. Thank you for loving us enough to want to spend eternity with us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and in his name that we dedicate them to his glory. Amen. Thank you. And as they return to their seats, I'm going to ask all the catechism, all the confirmation kids, and their families to please come forward. As they come forward, you see before you the catechisms, the Bibles, the workbooks, the tools that we assemble that are here not just because we like to make a show, but because we're asking God to bless these tools to be used to His glory, to be used to bring up a child in the way they should go. Would you join with me as we ask God's blessing? Heavenly Father, before us this day are tools that you've allowed to be created. Your word in written form, your word that could be studied, can be digested and inwardly allowed to grow. We ask, Lord, that all these tools are used along with the parents who continue to strengthen their children by their examples of what it means to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. May growth continue as the excitement builds, always to your glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, thank you. And as part of Creed Day, Congregational Response to Excellence in Educational Development, we have a lot of people who are involved in the education of this congregation. We're gonna ask all Connect Group leaders to come forward, and as you see, all education staff. I see the face of that kid that was on the screen. I'm so excited. Yeah. Ready for a great year? Yes. Absolutely. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you've come to be placed as Connect Group leaders, education staff for this congregation, a work in which our Father in Heaven has great joy. You're to assist the ministry of the Word and Sacrament in instructing God's children of all ages according to His Word. You're to prepare yourselves for this work through the power of the Holy Spirit. While holiness of life and work in, is a way of all who trust in Christ, it's especially important that you show yourselves by word and example to be patterns of good works in Christian devotion. So in the presence of God in this congregation, I ask you, do you accept the leadership roles entrusted to you? Do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in Him and conforming yourselves to His word? We will with the help of God. And now I ask the members of this congregation, will you support these leaders with your encouragement and prayers? Yes, with the help of God. Having pledged ourselves to this joyful task and receiving the support of the congregation, I place you as connect group leaders and educating staff in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Bring up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. 
There's a challenge in that gap there, isn't it? That's why we pray for all parents today, asking God's blessings of peace, patience, but also to continue to fight the good fight. So I'm going to ask not to come up, but all blessings and parents, God's blessing to you. Gracious Father, thank you. Thank you for being our Father who art in heaven. We ask your hand upon all parents this day, not just those who are here, but those who couldn't be here as well. Allow the power of your Spirit to fill them, to guide them, to uplift and sustain, always and forever, to the glory of your Son, and in his name we pray. Amen. Our prayers continue. There are so many things that God is doing and continues to do. Beth Snodgrass, Don Steele, Kim View, still hospitalized some, and, and some are now home. But continue to, to let God heal and work within them. For the education system, not just here, but throughout our country in the public as well. Two people here are going in for knee surgeries this week. Brian Bloomberg on Monday. Barney, outpatient surgery for half a knee. Wow, God is so good. Would you rise and join with me as we pray? Lord, to know you, to know the power of all that you do through, through people. Wow, it's just awesome. Thank you for the privilege of being part of, of viewing what you do. But even more than that now, to be a part of your plan. Lord, in a short video, we saw what you've done in just one short year. Amazing what happens when people join together to glorify you. As we look to this coming year and we see new manna coming around again, when we see the opportunities to, to leave this village, this place, and to step out in faith to serve you, man, it gets exciting. It is so exciting. and Just fill us with that spirit. We ask your hand upon all that continue to be in pain, ease their suffering, and, and focus them as well on the joy that is set before them, especially the greatest healing of all in your Son. Lord, you fill us with so much. Help us not to be filled with the ways of the world and worldly things, but establish our eyes and our ears upon you. We ask your blessings, knowing the greatest blessing has already occurred. Thanks for calling us to be your children. Thanks for making us, calling us to be your disciples. Father, bless not just a day, but bless the journey as we pray in the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. So a gracious and loving God comes into our hearts. He's, he's given us everything. And now he talks to his disciples. And he said, I've got a job for you to do. Get out there and get to work. But he sends us with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's making his face shine on you and he's gracious unto you. The Lord is looking upon you with favor. Go in his peace. Amen. And you know that stuff that's holding you back right now? Let's sing about it.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun for them to shine. But God who love me here below will be forever mine. Will be Please be seated. Good morning. A lot of neat things happening this day, this week, this month, this year. Let's use them to the glory of God. Connect group leaders, please make sure all are, re- all are going to be here tonight are represented. And let's greet one another as Colin gets to greet me.